The first country I realistically remember living in when I was younger was Sri Lanka for sure. And it was during a civil war at the time and within the first week of being there, there was a, a bomb on a bus like probably a kilometer away from the, the hotel we were at. So it was pretty crazy. And then within the three years I was there, twice there was an en enemy plane flying over and they'd turn off all the lights in the, in the town and have the guns shooting at the plane, just aimlessly shooting, trying to shoot it down. You just see bullets flying, it's red lights just flying. And I thought it was fireworks. I was telling my mom, look, it's fireworks, fireworks. But all the lights were off in the city and my mom told me quickly to go, go back to, to the door and just sit by the door in case anything happens. Well, I've had a pretty crazy travel experience, I guess, uh, following my dad's job uh, all around. Initially was born here, lived here in Australia for three years and then moved to Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, spent a bit more time in Australia, then moved to Dubai again and then eventually came back probably five or six years ago. Football has been part of my life the whole whole way through. So in Vietnam, it was no different. I had a, probably one of my most memorable coaches growing up, uh, Coach Kevin, who, who pretty much made me love the game. And even though I was only probably 10, 11 years old, that's when I was like, wow, this, this could be serious and something I'd want to do as a career. When I came back to Australia from Dubai, um, I was uh, trialing for Manly United in the under 18s. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. It was a tough time because you think to yourself, if you can't make Manly United under 18s, how are you meant to become a professional football player? I never really gave up on the dream. Thankfully, um, Konzi and Gano uh, from Hokoa gave me an opportunity trial over there in the under 18s. I ended up playing Manly United later that season and beating them 1-0 was uh, my little revenge to them and just fueled me even more, I guess. But they have to be careful because Tullio's cross in the run, off the crossbar off the back of the keeper and it's Max Ballard. I think the partnership that me and Josh Nisbet have created is mainly due to the bond we have with each other off the field and it's an amazing feeling knowing that you have a brother next to you that's going to put that extra mile for you if you mess up or it's just a bond that we have together and an understanding between us that makes us so good in the midfield. Living with your teammates is some experience. <laughs> Being surrounded by your, your best friends uh, and then going to play football with them is what you dream of as a kid. So having Dan Hall and other boys, uh, Mikey Katz and Zach Zorichich who are in the youth team who will also love, the, love their football. Uh, we thrive off it and when you have that bond off the field, you know you have that bond on the field as well. Dan Hall normally cooks for himself, occasionally for the boys. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm on the cleaning. Uh, all the all the utensils used in the kitchen, it's me there and there. But I do the dirty work on the field and off the field. That is correct. If football didn't really work out, uh, I always tended to to go towards uh, economics a bit. Did a bachelor of economics and a bachelor of commerce. So pretty broad study, I guess, and you can get into quite a few avenues and in investment banking or financial advisor or even a CFO of a football club. So not too sure exactly what I want to do post-career, but I'm just trying to focus on my career at the moment. The grand final would be immense for me to win. It would be amazing, not only for me, but also the club and the community around the Central Coast. It's been 10 years since we've been to the grand final and won it. And we've had some dark days uh, at the club, so uh, it's just an amazing way to, to put a smile on everyone's face here in the Central Coast.